What what do you even say after a game like that? After a crazy just madness from start to finish. It's like with the Ravens and Bengals. And the same thing happened when we played them a couple of weeks ago. It may start off a little bit slow, especially in the first half. But once they both get going, that's a wrap. And ain't no looking back after that. Team, keep it clean. I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched and we all were stressed out from like crazy. Between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals, where our Baltimore Ravens won 35-34 and they completed the season sweep of Cincinnati. And that's always a beautiful thing to say. Before we get into a team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as y'all have been. Turn notifications on as y'all have been. And last but certainly not least, leave a like on the video as y'all have been. Y'all went even crazy. You saw how crazy that game was. Y'all been going even crazier with leaving likes on the video, so I appreciate y'all like crazy for doing that and supporting the channel. I love you. I love you, and I hope whenever you're watching this, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, the evening, whatever day you're watching this on, I love you, and I hope that your day, your night, your evening, your week, your weekend, everything goes even amazinger than amazing, even though amazing are not even a word, but you get me. I, I love you, and I do really, really appreciate your time. So... Somebody whose time we've certainly appreciated as a Baltimore Raven has been Lamar Jackson. And my goodness, he is just, he's the best in the world. He is the best quarterback in the world. Not just the NFL, but the entire world. Lamar Jackson is just amazing. It's like in this game, when we were first watching this game, obviously the offense, they started off a bit slow. But then uh, when they got their first touchdown, and, and I was saying throughout the game too, even when they weren't getting touchdowns, I was saying it's crazy because with the offense, you can watch them and you could just see how close they were. You could see that they, they were like right there to clicking, but it just wasn't happening yet. Well, at least passing offense, running offense, Bengals, they, they shut that down like all day. Like there was Derrick Henry, he got a couple of nice runs, but... They were taking care of him all day. But as far as the passing offense, you could see they were so close to breaking out. I love how on the very first play of the game, Lamar Jackson snapped the ball, play action. They sent Rashad Bateman deep. And Lamar Jackson tried him. He tried him. But they weren't successful. But I love how they started it off. So shout out to them. But Lamar Jackson, uh, looking at his numbers, and again, numbers don't tell the whole story. But they sure do tell a lot of it. Lamar Jackson went 25 for 33 for 290 yards uh, and threw one, two, three, four touchdown passes. This man is just a legend. Obviously, Hall of Famer. Um, lining up for his third MVP. Um, it, he's just been amazing. He's been great. And I, I know we say this every week. We say this every single week how great Lamar Jackson is. But he shows us every single week how great he is. And the number of sacks that he took, zero. Now, the offensive line, they gave up some sacks, but Lamar Jackson, he did not get sacked because, well, he's Lamar Jackson. And to just watch him go through these plays, to watch him just pick apart the defense, to watch him evade defenders and pass rushers just on a weekly basis, my goodness, it's insane. The Baltimore Ravens, they deserve this 10-day. The Baltimore Ravens need this 10-day. We as fans. We need this 10-day break. Look, I love watching the Baltimore Ravens every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever they play. But I am actually very glad and very thankful that we are getting ready to get a 10-day break from watching Ravens football. I don't mind it. We get this mini bye week, and I feel like we all need it badly. But certainly uh, the Baltimore Ravens do uh, for sure. But Lamar Jackson, um, he just continues to make play after play after play. Just crazy. Today he was just playing basketball out there. He was just shooting all these jumpers uh, with touchdown passes and whatnot, even some floaters to, to Mark Andrews, too, uh, for a big game. But Lamar Jackson, again, amazing. Now, um, a couple things with Lamar Jackson. That play where he, he ran back like 30 yards and then he ended up gaining 29. Like, he, who does that, man? Who's doing this stuff that Lamar Jackson, nobody. That's why I say, man, he is the best quarterback. It's him. Shout out to Patrick Mahomes. Right now, Patrick Mahomes is obviously the most successful quarterback recently. But Lamar Jackson right here, right now, he is the best quarterback doing it, man. It's crazy to just see everything that he's capable of. 
And when you watch him, it's like, how did that, how was that even possible? How was he even doing that? You, you go through his touchdown passes. Um, the one to Mark Andrews, just float it up to him, float it up to him. Now, the one to Tylen Wallace. I love that one. I think that was most of our favorites because Lamar, he got Tylen Wallace the ball. I think it was maybe like a two-yard pass, something like that. But Tylen Wallace said, Lamar, look, 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 look. You be doing so much for us. You be coming through for us all the time. You know what? Let me take some of the weight off your shoulders. Gotcha. And I think he got 79 yards worth of yak on an 80, was it an 84-yard run? Not an 84-yard run. I think it was an 84-yard touchdown. Yeah, it was an 84-yard touchdown. He said he got 79 yards worth of yak. So Lamar threw him a five-yard pass. And Tyler Wallace did the rest. And when he first made the guy miss, I was like, oh, okay. And then he stiff on the second guy. I was like, oh, okay. And then he just kept going. So initially I was thinking, oh, did he step out? Nope. He didn't. And it was a beautiful thing to see. Um, Lamar Jackson's touchdown to Nelson Aguilar. Just easy. Lamar Jackson, uh, he rolled out. And I thought he was about to scramble. He looked like he was about to take off. And he tucked the ball, so that made the defense bite even more. Then he pulled it out, threw it at Nelson Aguilar, wide open, easy touchdown. Easy money. Easy money. It, it, it was so beautiful to see. And, and then the last touchdown, the one to Rashad Bateman. Interesting sequence of plays. I did not like the fact that they did not run the ball because I figured, all right, Ravens, they're going to try to run the clock. Bengals only had, I believe, one time out at that time. So I'm like, okay, they're going to try to run the clock. Nope. They did a play action, and they threw it to Rashad Bateman. Perfect pass. Hit him right in the hands. What did Rashad Bateman do? <laughs> he dropped it. I said, oh, man. I didn't like the play call, but certainly didn't like the execution uh, by the receiver. But what Lamar Jackson did the very next play is something that he normally doesn't do, especially with Rashad Bateman. Uh, because most times with Rashad Bateman, if, if Lamar will – Hit Rashad Bateman on a pass, and Rashad Bateman drops it, then a lot of times Lamar won't even look his way again. But Lamar was like, look, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give you another shot. I'm going to give you another opportunity. I'm going to give you another chance, Rashad Bateman, because I've been seeing what they've been saying about you. Uh, I know what's been going on. You here with me in this locker room. You one of my guys. I got you. And he got it to him, and Rashad Bateman came down with the touchdown. I, that was just, it was very surprising, um, but it was great. I love that. I love that for Rashad Bateman, something that we've been talking about, um, especially with the trade for Deontay Johnson, especially Rashad Bateman over the past couple of weeks with the drops that he's had. I feel like his confidence could have been a bit shaky, but Lamar going right, literally right back to him the very next play. It says a lot about Lamar Jackson. It says a lot about how he feels about Rashad Bateman. Um, sticking with receivers, uh, Deontay Johnson. He, he got his first target in this game. He actually got two targets in this game. One was a catch. It was right before halftime. Um, and with Deontay Johnson, we saw just a, a lack of um, just urgency because the Ravens didn't have any timeouts. Why? Why didn't they have any timeouts? Well, early on in the game, the Bengals' offense was driving. They had completed a three-yard pass. And John Harbaugh decided to challenge it to see if it was incomplete or not. And initially, when I was watching the game live, I wasn't tripping. I was like, oh, that ain't a bad challenge because, yeah, his knee was down. It looks like a catch. But at the same time, he lost control of the ball when he went out of bounds, when he kind of rolled and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, maybe they, he's challenging that. But then somebody in the, in the comment section, they told me, they said, Engraven, he's literally challenging a three-yard completion. And then I was like, oh, my God. Well, when you put it like that, yikes. So that was a timeout. And then they ended up calling another timeout because I believe they were they, the Ravens had 12 men on the field, so they were trying to make sure that they didn't get that penalty. So they only had two timeouts left, and then later on um, in the second half, they used their third timeout. So they, their timeouts were gone. So right before halftime, they were trying to drive the ball down the field. Um, so And they've been really good at doing that. They've been excellent at doing that, and I love that the fact that they went for it. Uh, but Lamar threw the ball to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson caught it. Then he got tackled, and then he kind of like just got up, kind of like oh, whatever. Um, so maybe it was an awareness thing. Maybe it was I, I don't know, but I, I wasn't feeling that. But then on his second target, uh, Deontay Johnson he had beat the corner. He was open, and then Lamar. It was a broken play, but then Lamar saw him cutting up the field. Lamar threw it up, and Deontay Johnson's running, and then he tripped. Said, Oof, rough start. But hey, again, they 
it's early, so I, I ain't tripping too much off of that. But that that is possible points, possible big plays that got taken off the board. But it obviously didn't hurt the Ravens too much because they end up getting the wins. Hey, Flowers! And shout out to Heart of the City uh, for the human joystick hoodies supporting Zay Flowers. Shout out to Zay Flowers. Um, cause he, he nice. He nice. Tonight, he had a more quiet game. Um, because when you look at his numbers, we, Zay Flowers have been getting 100 yard game after 100 yard game after 100 yard game. Uh, but tonight, he had four catches for 34 yards. So he wasn't as active as we are used to seeing him. But. See, that's the beauty of this Baltimore Ravens offense. Zay Flowers wasn't going crazy as he usually is. And again, shout out to Heart of the City Clothing. Make sure you use code Engraven30 for 30% off your Zay Flowers human joystick hoodie. But anyway, Zay Flowers, with him not going as crazy as he normally does, the Ravens were without Isaiah Likely. They have not been able to get Deontay Johnson going yet. It's only been two games, so I ain't tripping off of that. But the Baltimore Ravens, like Lamar Jackson has said before, Pick your poison. Pick your poison. And th tonight, their running game wasn't even much of anything. But like Lamar Jackson said before, pick your poison. Because you look at their, their leading receiver was Tylen Wallace with 115 yards. Obviously, most of that came on that 84-yard touchdown, but they went right back to him after that. Right back to him. I feel like with Tylen Wallace, it's personal with him. Because the Ravens keep bringing in these guys named Deontay to take Tylen Wallace's spot, to take Tylen Wallace's reps. And Tylen Wallace's like, no, nah, I ain't going for that, man. I ain't trying to hit none of that. Last season, we remember in the Rams game, that great punt return by Tylen Wallace, where he pretty much did the same thing that he did in his 84-yard touchdown tonight. But with that, they, they signed Deontay Hardy as a punt return and kick return. They signed him as a return man. The day that they signed Deontay Hardy, Tylen Wallace, um, he reposted uh, the highlights of him with the punt return. I said, ooh, okay, I see, I see what you're doing there. So that was no coincidence. Then what happens? The Baltimore Ravens, a week before the trade deadline, they trade for a wide receiver, Deontay Johnson. Tylen Wallace was probably like, man, wow, okay. I didn't really have my opportunity like that. And what's crazy is that a lot of us have been saying, we've been talking about it on here for a while, with Tylen Wallace, it's not that he's a bad receiver. It's just that with Tylen Wallace, there's always been so many people in front of him that he really hasn't gotten an opportunity like that at receiver. So tonight, it was really nice getting to see him get his shine on. So we love that for Tylen Wallace. We're happy for Tylen Wallace, and we love that for the Baltimore Ravens offense as well because it adds yet another weapon. Another weapon. Todd Monken, great job. Started off a little shaky. <laughs> but great job Way to close it out But he was the leading receiver With 115 yards Mark Andrews had 6 catches for 68 yards Rashad Bateman had 6 catches for 54 yards Look at that boy Bate My favorite play from Rashad Bateman In the game It came uh, on the Ravens Last offensive drive um, Where Rashad Bateman He I think it was first and 10 or second and 10 I forgot But Rashad Bateman ran to the first down marker Turned around, like a little comeback route. Lamar Jackson hit him. Rashad Bateman caught it. He made the guy kind of miss a little bit. Started running up field a little bit. But then, and I was, oh, I was so scared because I know Rashad Bateman's hands, they, they could be a little bit shaky. But he went down. He didn't try fighting through the contact. He ain't try to fight him for a bunch of extra yards. He just went down. And I was like, oh, thank you, Rashad Bateman, because that was such a smart play. Such a smart play. Because there was even a play early on in the game. Uh, where Lamar, not early on in the game, but earlier in the game, where Lamar Jackson, they needed it. Ravens needed it bad. They were down. And Lamar Jackson got pressure, like usual. Um, and he had defenders all over him, and he threw it. And it looked like he was throwing it down, but he threw it to Rashad Bateman, and Rashad Bateman sort of juggled it, but he didn't. He ended up catching it. So I was like, oof, it, it was such a scary play. So, so it was so much scariness in this game. This game was frightening, but Ravens end up scaring off the Bengals, sending them home to the crib. Thursday Night Football um, with their Purple Rising jerseys, too. Uh, but, yeah, that was so the receivers, they were doing their thing. Charlie Kohler, he had a catch, too. I forgot about that one. Derrick Henry, he even had a catch as well. Um, and Justice Hill, he had two catches, but they ain't go for no yards. So, again, pick your poison. Ravens can get it in so many different ways. Their offense, they scored 35 points, but 
their offense wasn't even rolling all the way. They really weren't. Derrick Henry, again, shout out to the Bengals because they were like, look, Ravens, we ain't about to let Derrick Henry go off. We done seen what he done to all these other teams on a weekly basis. We know he's breaking history, breaking all these records. Not against us tonight. Oh, no. Derrick Henry had 16 carries. So they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't forget about him. There was some spurts in the game where they did forget about Derrick Henry. But overall, they remembered who Derrick Henry was. But he had 16 carries for 68 yards. And what's crazy about that? He did have a touchdown. But what's crazy about that? His longest run was 11 yards. He averaged 4.3 yards a carry. That's not bad. That's not bad. But for Derrick Henry's standards, especially this year with the 2024 Baltimore Ravens, that's a bad game. That average... Uh, definitely the uh, the total yards, 68 yards. But that average, that's low for Derrick Henry. We're used to seeing him like six, seven yards per carry. All this, these crazy high numbers. But the Bengals, they said, nope, not today. Lamar Jackson, he wasn't even running like that initially. Um, he had seven carries for 33 yards. Uh, but he, his longest run was 10 yards technically. But his longest run was 29 yards. Again, he ran back 30 yards and then gained 29 yards, stayed in bounds and all that, was right by the side. It was so crazy, man. Lamar Jackson is just that guy. He's that guy, but we don't need to focus too much on that. Um, but shout out to the offense. Offense has continued just to put up points. Um, they, again, I think we mentioned this earlier, but they set a record this season thus far. Um, for the team that scored the most points in the second half With them scoring 28 points in the second half No other team has scored that much in the second half this year I said, wow, Ravens offense Like, oh, Ravens offense Doing stuff like this Lamar Jackson, one last thing before we move on to special teams and defense I, I love when the Ravens win But then when they get the sexy numbers too I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, especially for Lamar Jackson, too. Uh, again, we went over his passing numbers, but threw four touchdowns tonight uh, and no interception. But there was one that looked like it was an interception by Cam Taylor Britt. It was when Lamar, he got pressured, he made some people miss, uh, and then he extended the play, extended the play, extended the play, and then he threw it. He was throwing to Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews was trying to do his signature slide and catch, but Cam Taylor Britt jumped it. And I said, oh. Man, I said that's the first interception this year. That's Lamar's fault. Man. Ah, it was frustrating, man. But then they looked at the replay, and Cam Taylor Britt did not catch the ball. I said, yes. There we go. Yes. Lamar Jackson still clean. So I believe what he had, 24 touchdowns, 24 passing touchdowns to two interceptions. And again, I know y'all tired of hearing me say it, but the, those two interceptions, they came off of drops. Drops by Mark Andrews and a drop by Rashad Bateman. But that's okay. It's football. It happens. It is what it is. Special teams. Special teams in this game. Um, shout out to Jordan Stout for some excellent punts. We wish we would, didn't have to rely on you that much, but it is part of the game. It is what it is. Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker. Oh, real quick, shout out to Keith Mitchell. He was our starting kick returner. He, he, he brought one out, but that was it. But um, Justin Tucker, man, this has been a season for Justin Tucker. Uh, early on this season, um, he was missing field goal after field goal after field goal. And then um, that Bills game, he was only kicking point after touchdown. I don't think he kicked any field goals that game, which was like, okay, nice. Give him a break. Um, but then he started kicking field goals again, and he was making them. But then for the extra points, the points after the touchdowns, they were looking a little bit shaky. Now, he was making them. He was making them. But they were still looking a bit shaky. And it was like, huh. And then he's still missed another field goal, too. But it was like, oh, Justin Tucker, what is going on? And even though he was making them, we were still like, ooh, this, I don't know about these. These ain't really looking too good, my friend. And then tonight, he missed the extra point. Thank goodness it didn't come back to bite the Baltimore Ravens. But it's like, ooh, uh, yikes. So with Justin Tucker, scary. It, it, it is very scary that um, we just hope that whatever's going on, he, he needs a 10-day break. All, all the Ravens need this 10-day break. They could all use this 10-day break for sure. Um, but, yeah, so maybe you just need to ease his mind a little bit, take some time off, uh, and then be back next week, and everything will be good to go. Defense. Woo. Defense. <laughs> Yikes. Um. Pains me to say this. I, I don't like calling for anybody's job. 
But and I and I as y'all know, I've said it plenty of times. Zach O ain't going nowhere. We know the Ravens like that's he's homegrown. He's a homegrown Raven. They love Zach O. I just think they need to think about some things. I know Dean Pease, he's helping out too. Uh, we saw him in the booth. And it's not all him. Sometimes it's personnel. Like, he can't do nothing if one of his players gets a holding call, face mask call, roughing the pass. So he can't do nothing about illegal contact, whatever. He can't do nothing about that. But every single week, wins, losses, it's the same stuff every single week. Why are we going against the Cincinnati Bengals? Bengals don't have Orlando Brown Jr. So you expect, okay, our pass rush should be better. It was overall. But even more importantly, Bengals don't have T. Higgins. So we should be like, okay, they still got Jamal Chase, one of the best receivers, not only in the AFC North, not even just the AFC, but the entire NFL. And if you, if you want to say he's the best, you can. For, for, for me, it's Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Jamal Chase up there. But it's not like Tyreek Hill's up here and Justin Jefferson's here and Jamal Chase there. No, they're really interchangeable. So if you came up to me and was like, hey, Engraven, my top three receivers are Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Tyreek Hill. Hey, I can't argue with you. I can't argue with you at all because they like all right next to each other. But anyway, with Jamar Chase, you would think that the Baltimore Ravens going against Jamar Chase, especially after the last game, after the last time you played the Bengals, Jamar Chase went crazy on you back then. So you would think, okay, now let's... Nah, not this time around. Oh, no, buddy. Uh-uh. Especially after last week... Well, two weeks ago, excuse me, when you didn't have a Nate Wiggins in the game, you didn't have a Marlon Humphrey in the game. You would think, oh, man, I got these guys back. This will be their second game back. I really going to appreciate these guys. Oh, we going against Jamal Chase. Oh, I, I, I got something for him. You think he about to go off? All game. All game. And it wasn't, it, it, what made it so worse, it wasn't even a thing where he was just going off uh, for a half. And then in the second half, they, oh, all right, we adjusted to, to Jamal Chase. No, the whole game the whole game when we look at jamar chase's numbers um they're scary because they're madden numbers and i even mentioned this in the stream and somebody said oh i can't even do that in madden so it's it's crazy to think about jamar chase he had 11 catches for 264 yards and three touchdowns that is that's terrible man it's terrible too, too, too much of this just keeps happening. It's the same stuff over and over and over. Same stuff over and over. And again, you would think like, all right, they're going to definitely have something in store for Jamal Chase. They didn't have anything. Nothing. Nothing. He just kept beating them over and over in the middle of the field, on the outside, everywhere. Just kept beating them. And then even for that touchdown play, the, 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 the last, his last touchdown of the game. He jumped up, and, and it was a great pass by Joe Burrow. Great play by Jamal Chase. Very concentrated catch. It was nice. But what? Then it was like the one time they did. It looked like they doubled him when it was doing when it was live. But they just had Nate Wiggins. I forgot who. Maybe it was all Darius Washington. Uh, they were playing a zone, and Nate Wiggins was like right in between Jamal Chase and this other uh, receiver. Maybe it was a running back. But anyway, they just it, it was pitiful just seeing him do whatever he wanted. All game long. All game long. It's like, really? Why? Like, again, it's supposed to be made easier for you. T. Higgins ain't playing. He ain't playing. Why is Jamal Chase going off? So frustrating, man. I just, I, I, I could not believe it. But it kept happening. Got to give a special shout out to Joe Burrow, man. He's amazing. Oh, well, our defense, like, it's terrible too, but Joe Burrow is amazing. Joe Burrow. 34 for 56. And you know what's funny? John, John Gruden, former head coach of the Bucks or the Raiders, he said that Joe Burrow was going to throw four. I think he said he, Joe Burrow was going to throw 60 passes in this game. He, I mean, he pretty much did, did. He threw 56. But Joe Burrow, 34 out of 56, 428 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Got sacked three times, though. Shout out to Matabike. I think Matabike got all three. So we've been talking about how he needs to step up. We need more from him. He showed up tonight, and a big reason why he showed up, number 98, he was right there next to him, and he was looking healthy. I said, yeah, there we go. We needed that. Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey, he had a good game in this game. He did have a penalty, but 
more important than the penalty, he had a turnover. He forced a turnover uh, where he stripped the ball out of, um, I believe that was Chase Brown's arm. Uh, Roquan Smith recovered the fumble, and Ravens needed that because I believe at that time Ravens were down 21-7, to and they just looked lifeless. They looked hopeless. It was looking rough. But Marlon Humphrey, he gave them life. He really did. Um, and that's Ravens defense, man. That's what it is this year. They're not making many stops, but you got to hope that they get a turnover here or there. And that's that's what it is, man. This defense is really bad. It's really bad. I think they really need to seriously make some decisions there, but they're not going to. And they ain't going to make any decisions or anything like that. No, I don't want to say nothing's going to change, but as far as the staff and whatnot, nothing's going to change with that. I'll be very surprised if they did. I think that they should, but ain't nothing going to change there. But if it were to change, this would be a very good opportunity with this 10-day break. And you ain't even at your bye week yet. Because think about that. Like you're, and it's not all on the coordinator. It's not all on the staff. It's on the players too, like we said. But if guys are open every, all the time, so many times, um, like Chase Brown, like it's like every, every drive almost, he was always getting a check down wide open, wide open. So much. Let me see how many catches he had. It got to be like eight or nine. He had, oh, see, he had nine catches for 52 yards. Nine catches for 52 yards. Because Joe Burrow kept throwing it to him. Because he kept being open. Over and, over. And, and that's what happens with the Ravens. There will at least be a wide receiver always open. Or there will be a running back. In the short game, he'll be, always be open. Every week. Every week is the same thing. Every week. People running wide open. Wide open. So something has just got to give with this defense, man. It's got to. I mean, besides them giving up all these points. But... Something got to change, and hopefully this little mini bye week, they just, again, they take the time off because they all they deserve the time off because that's a brutal schedule, especially a, a football. Like, that's tough. You just had a game on Sunday, then you turn around four days later, you got another. Oh, that, ooh, that'll put some wear and tear on your body for sure. So they deserve this break. It's a nice long break. So good for them. Um, but when they come back, like, that defense, it just, oh. They need something. Kyle Hamilton. That's something big about the defense is that um, Kyle Hamilton went out. Uh, and the defense, they were making some nice stops for a little bit. <laughs> that all went out the window. But for a little bit, they were, they were making some nice stops, keeping the Ravens offense in the game and whatnot. Ravens offense wasn't doing them no favors for a little while. But then they, when they woke up, it's like, okay, here we go. But Ravens defense, um, they lost Kyle Hamilton. Harbaugh said it was a sprained ankle. He said he don't think it's going to be serious. So I didn't think it was serious when it was live. Like, I saw him go down holding his knee. But then when he was, like, hopping and hobbling and whatnot, I was like, then they showed the replay. I don't think it's serious. Some people were saying, oh, Achilles, Achilles, Achilles. I said, I, ain't, I don't think it's Achilles. I thought, it, I thought it was his ankle. So that's what Harbaugh said, too. So, yeah, we got to trust that. Got to trust Harbaugh's word, huh? Yeah, hey. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to Harbaugh, man. Um, but shout out to these Ravens, man. Sitting at what seven and three, um, six and four would have been really ugly. Would have been really nasty to look at. Obviously over five hundred, but mm, we wanted to get as over five hundred as we possibly could. Um, and this game, it doesn't necessarily kill the Bengals' season, but it doesn't give them any life either. Uh, but they they played exactly how you would expect a team to play. That's fighting for their uh, their seasons. It's fighting for their playoff lives. Um, they brought it. It was a division game. It was just everything that you can expect and more. So Bengals, they did not go out with a, without a fight. They fought hard. But the Ravens, they fought that much harder. The calls in this game. I know a lot of people are talking about the referees. And, and I know I've seen a lot of people out of discourse talking about the two-point conversion where there was a missed face mask call on Joe Burrow or for Joe Burrow getting hit in the face mask. Um, I think some people said there was a, a hold, defensive holding call that they missed. Um, but on that same play, like Kyle Vinoy, he was getting held a lot, a whole lot. And actually, in this game, the calls went probably about 80% the Bengals' way. Maybe 75, 80% the Bengals' way. They were in favor of the Bengals. Heavy. Heavy. There was one rough in the passer call. Who was that on? I, f I forgot who it was on. I think it was on Broderick Washington. And they showed a replay. I said, what? That's rough in the. What? 
That's crazy. There was a miss face mask call on Zay Flowers. Defender grabbed his face mask. No call, nothing. Nothing. So, but there was some just, there was some crazy calls in this one. Throughout. Throughout. But it's, it's just, and it's like whenever the Ravens, a lot of times whenever Ravens would get a nice play. We couldn't even be too excited because we look around. Oh, oh, is there going to be a flag? But thank goodness that they prevailed through everything. Again, this is why they need this 10-day break. We need this 10-day break. This 10-day break is good uh, for everybody. But team, keep it clean. I love you all so much. I appreciate you all so much. Uh, even though the Ravens are on a 10-day break, we still got you all. We got plenty to cover. We got plenty to go over. And we're going to be doing just that. I love y'all. I appreciate you again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on so you don't miss a single video, a single update on these Baltimore Ravens or really anything else going on in the NFL. Make sure you also leave a like on the video. I appreciate y'all for supporting. I appreciate y'all for leaving likes on the video. I appreciate the way that y'all just help this channel out and y'all come through every single day. I love you. And just like the Bengals will be when it comes to being in the playoffs, hopefully, we out.